bringing news that matters to you. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Welcome back. The Northern Region Public Service Planning Committee, along with the Ministry of Public Service, is celebrating their 16th annual public service in recognition of retirees throughout the month of October under the theme, The Public Service, The Heartbeat of the Nation. This year's honorees are from the Royal Bahamas Police Force, the Department of Education, the Office of the Attorney General, the Department of Road Traffic, Bahamas Customs Department, the Local Department, and the Passport Office. During this month, 30 long-serving public officers in the Northern Region will, who have retired after a tenure of 25 years and more between July 1st, 2015, pardon me, 2014, and June 30th, 2015, will be honored. The celebration began with a Thanksgiving service on Sunday at Mary Star of the Sea Catholic Church. An appreciation luncheon will be held on Thursday. The chairman of the planning committee says the public is invited to celebrate the work of these individuals. All public officers, retired honorees, family and friends are invited to attend and participate in these scheduled events as we celebrate these 30 committed and dedicated public officers who for the greater portion of their lives have been the heartbeat of the nation in public service. Now a food drive will be conducted throughout October to be distributed to local charities. Also in news this evening, we are just a few weeks into the new school year and unfortunately some of the schools are still waiting on a full complement of teachers. Area Vice President of the Bahamas Union of Teachers, Quentin LaRota, says that all efforts are being made to address this issue. He says that in the past, union leaders have resulted to playing the game, blame game, but going forward the union is working together to be unified and have more solutions. We decided that we'd focus more on coming up with a, a solution to these problems so that come in in the next school year, not only we solve this problem this school year, but in the next school year, we wouldn't have these kind of shortages. And rather than just be someone to criticize management for any shortfalls, we wanted to use our influence to see how best we could assist. The main challenge, I think, in all of it is the vetting process. Um, the police force has an, an awesome task of vetting everybody that's coming into the um, public service now. And in particular, um, teachers who are uh, prospective uh, employees, because they have to be around children. And we've had instances of inappropriate contact between teachers and students that we want to do everything possible to prevent that. Now, when it comes to Grand Bahama, he says there's one school in particular that has the biggest shortage. I think in Grand Bahama, interestingly enough, the teachers, the school that was most short of teachers was actually St. George's. Um, that's not the impression um, you would get um, from from from, all, from the media coverage, but it actually was uh, St. George's was more short of teachers than any other school. But we had to pay particular attention to Eight Mile Rock, um, knowing the the nature of the situation and the sensitivity of it, and how um, for so long um, they've been plagued by one. Um, distressful situation after another that it was more important um, even as a matter of sentiment and encouragement um, community pride and to demonstrate a degree of care and concern because it's a community school that we had to, to fix those issues down there. The Junior Achievement Program is celebrating its 32nd anniversary and Chairman Ron Dame says that they will continue to expand this program. Teams, youth innovation uh, leading the way uh, is one whereby we expect our young people to really come forth, even uh, expressing greater efforts to want to strive for excellence. And the J program encourages that leadership, entrepreneurship. Participants Sarah Gibbs and Ashia King are excited about what this program has to offer. I got involved because I wanted to learn how to become a successful entrepreneur and one of my goals in life is to always become a business person. So I thought Jay was the best choice for me to join so I can practice and achieve my goals. I've been in the program since the ninth grade and I really love junior achievement because it allows persons to gain business knowledge, basically marketing skills, to be able to produce a product 
and the program is very fun. There's many events throughout the year that I enjoy, like watching the sports day and participating in the speech finals. Well, the Grand Bahama Corporate Citizen launching an initiative for public primary schools. Their first stop was at the Freeport Primary School. Kimberly Mullings picks up this story. Mulligan's Meats and Spices came up with the idea to recognize students from government primary schools. So the store then asked each institution to select a student from grade 5 and under who has defined what it is to be an excellent student. Manager Yolande Archer Roll. It's a student who exhibit academic excellence, um, who ex exhibits good deportment, who is always willing to participate, a real, well-rounded well student we're looking for. And we ask the school to, to let us, to give her the name of the student, and we present them with, you know, with some gifts and prizes to inspire them and to highlight them and to help them, you know, just know that, that rewards are coming and rewards are here. Former fifth grade student Ashley Hepburn received a check in the amount of $100 and a tablet which she says she will use for her homework. She is grateful for her teacher, Mrs. Cash. She taught me stuff I didn't know yet and she helped, and she helped me. Ashley plans to complete her senior year at Freeport Primary School as an honor roll student. Both she and Archer Roll encourage future awardees to put their best foot forward in all that they do. They should keep on doing the, that they should keep on doing the best. We'd just like to congratulate Ashley um, on receiving this award and we'd like to say to, to future awardees out there you never know who's watching, you never know who's, who's listening. Always, always try to strive to be your best. Mulligan's Meats and Spices is pleased to have begun this initiative to highlight well-rounded students. They hope to keep students motivated through the school year. Kimberly Mullings, ZNS Network News. And now it's time to Ask the Doctor. This is Ask the Doctor. I'm Dr. Monique Pratt. Welcome. Tina from Freeport asked, I feel like I can sometimes hear my own heart beating and I can feel it in my throat. Am I just imagining this? Thanks for your timely question, Tina. And being aware that your heart is pounding is not your imagination. It sounds like you are describing heart palpitations. Palpitations feel like your heart is beating too hard or too fast, skipping a beat, or fluttering. You may also experience a pounding sensation in your chest, throat, or neck. They are usually not harmful and often go away on their own, but in some cases they can be more serious and may be related to an underlying heart or thyroid condition. Palpitations that are not harmful can result from consuming too much stimulants, like caffeine or nicotine, drinking too much alcohol, or they can also be associated with anxiety and panic attacks. Some women can also experience them during pregnancy. Palpitations can also be more serious if they are related to an underlying heart problem or heart disease as they are more likely to present as an arrhythmia which is an irregular beating of your heart. If you experience heart palpitations, please see a doctor immediately for evaluation and advice. I'm Dr. Monique Pratt, and this has been Ask the Doctor. Stay with us, Ricardo Redborn has a check on sports when we come back. 